Usually, when SpaceX launches a rocket, most people focus only on whether the rocket exploded or not. However, there's much more involved in measuring the success of a mission. The rocket is only part of the equation. There's also the launch mount, the launch tower, and other surrounding infrastructure to consider. Developing the world's largest rocket also means building the world's strongest infrastructure, and creating this infrastructure can be as challenging as building the rocket itself. Naturally, any damage to the launch pad or tower means more than just a setback for SpaceX. Recently, images of the launch pad after the latest launch were released, and they didn't meet everyone's expectations. In this video, we will talk about these developments and discuss whether the launch pad will be ready for the next flight on time. The launch pad faced several significant issues during recent Starship launch, particularly involving the water deluge system and the ship Quick Disconnect. Initially, SpaceX implemented the water deluge system after the first Starship launch, which created a large crater beneath the launch pad. After this launch, Musk realized the need for a water deluge system. This system is designed to protect the launch pad from the intense heat and vibrations generated during rocket launches by flooding the area with water to cool the launch pad and suppress flames. Despite this, the water-cooled steel plate beneath the orbital launch mount showed significant wear after the recent launch. Post-flight images revealed that the steel plate had turned yellow due to the intense heat from the rocket engines, which overheated the steel and altered its color. This suggests that while the steel plate works, it may not be durable enough for long-term use. SpaceX may need to modify or replace the steel plate with one that can better handle the extreme conditions of rocket launches. For the Starship launches, this system can discharge up to 40,000 gallons of water per minute. This is substantially more than what was used in previous rocket launches, demonstrating the system's capacity to handle the immense energy generated. In comparison, NASA's deluge systems, such as those used at the Kennedy Space Center for the Space Shuttle launches, typically discharge around 12,000 to 14,000 gallons per minute. Moreover, the water is cooled before it is released to further reduce the heat impact on the launch pad. This cooling process is crucial in preventing the steel plate from overheating and sustaining damage. Despite these measures, the steel plate underneath the orbital launch mount is showing signs of wear after just a few launches. The discoloration and structural changes observed in the steel plate suggest that SpaceX may need to explore more advanced materials or additional cooling techniques to enhance its durability and longevity. They could consider using steel alloys with higher heat resistance or incorporating more advanced cooling technologies to ensure the pad can withstand hundreds or even thousands of launches without significant wear. The ship Quick Disconnect also faced some issues after the launch. This component is a critical part of the launch system, providing the necessary fuel and power connections to the rocket before liftoff. The Quick Disconnect is designed to connect the rocket to ground systems, supplying it with fuel, oxidizer, and power during the pre-launch phase, and then disconnecting smoothly as the rocket lifts off. Once the rocket engines ignite and the vehicle begins to lift off, the quick disconnect must disconnect quickly and cleanly to avoid any drag or damage to the rocket or the ground systems. One of the primary challenges with the quick disconnect is its exposure to the intense vibrations and forces generated during liftoff. These forces can cause it to misalign or malfunction. SpaceX has made several adjustments to address these issues, including altering its position, changing the contact angle, and expanding its operating range. These adjustments are intended to make the quick disconnect more resilient to the extreme conditions it faces during launch. Despite these efforts, the system continues to struggle with the powerful forces of rocket launches. The strong vibrations can cause it to lose its alignment or fail to disconnect properly which could potentially damage the rocket or the ground systems. It must not only withstand these forces, but also ensure a smooth disconnection to prevent any interruptions in the fuel and power supply until the last possible moment. The Quick Disconnect system is designed with several safety features to manage these challenges. These include redundancy in the connections to ensure that if one part fails, another can take over. The system also incorporates sensors and monitoring equipment to detect any misalignment or malfunction early on, allowing for adjustments to be made before they can cause a problem. 
In addition to these technical adjustments, SpaceX may need to explore more robust materials or innovative designs to further enhance the system's resilience. This could involve using materials with higher tolerance to vibrations and heat, or redesigning the coupling mechanism to ensure a more secure and reliable connection. Despite all these issues, the chopstick system still appears to be functioning well post-launch. It is part of SpaceX's innovative Mechazilla, which is designed to catch and stabilize the rocket booster upon return, eliminating the need for landing legs and allowing for rapid reusability. After the recent launch, the chopstick system was lowered for further inspection by the team, but overall, it won't require major repairs. The chopstick system operates by using two massive arms that can move vertically along the launch tower. These arms are equipped with mechanisms to grip and stabilize the rocket booster as it ascends or descends. For landing, the arms are positioned to catch the returning booster, guiding it back onto the launch mount with precision. Meanwhile, the surrounding infrastructure, especially the tank farms, remained unaffected by the flight. Musk is now planning to launch another Starship as soon as next month. SpaceX is implementing even more changes to the Starship in preparation for this upcoming launch. One of the most crucial upgrades involves the Starship's heat shield. In previous tests, some tiles fell off, posing a significant risk. To address this, SpaceX plans to reinforce the heat shield with a secondary layer of protection. Musk confirmed on Twitter that the new tiles would be twice as strong as their predecessors, significantly reducing the likelihood of them cracking or coming loose. Additionally, SpaceX will implement a silicone felt layer beneath the tiles, which, although not reusable, will provide an extra layer of safety in case any tiles are lost. Beyond the heat shield, SpaceX is also focusing on upgrading other critical components of Starship. SpaceX is working on a new design for the hot staging section that will enhance Starship's quick turnaround capabilities without the need for discarding parts. Another anticipated upgrade involves the addition of roll control thrusters. These thrusters will improve control during the landing process, reducing issues like valve clogging that have occurred in previous flights. Starting from prototype ship 29, these thrusters have been integrated into the design, and their performance will continue to be refined in subsequent prototypes. Another exciting change for the upcoming flight is the re-entry profile of the Super Heavy Booster 12. After successfully landing both stages in the ocean, SpaceX now aims to catch the booster using the Mechazilla arm starting from Flight 5. This approach involves the booster steering itself towards the catch tower and has never been attempted by any other organization. If the booster detects any issues, it will divert and safely land in the ocean. This automatic adjustment ensures the safety of the launch tower while aiming for a successful catch. During the fourth flight, SpaceX used a virtual tower to simulate the catching process instead of the actual Mechazilla tower. This virtual tower test was designed to gather data on the booster's ability to navigate and position itself for a precise catch without the risk of damaging the actual tower. Musk stated that the successful execution of this virtual tower catch gave SpaceX the confidence to attempt the actual catch in the upcoming flight. Mechazilla, equipped with massive chopstick arms, is designed to catch the returning Super Heavy booster out of mid-air. These arms, attached to a 145-meter-tall launch tower at SpaceX's Starbase, are engineered to withstand extreme conditions and handle the immense weight of the booster. The concept behind Mechazilla is to enable rapid reusability by catching the booster and placing it directly back on the launch mount, ready for refueling and relaunch within hours, rather than the days or weeks required for traditional recovery methods. Unlike the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters, which land on drone ships equipped with landing legs, the Super Heavy booster is much larger and heavier. The Falcon 9, for example, stands about 70 meters tall with a liftoff weight of approximately 549,000 kilograms, while the Super Heavy booster is around 69 meters tall but significantly heavier, designed to carry much larger payloads. This increased size and weight make traditional landing methods impractical for Super Heavy, hence the development of the Mechazilla system. By catching the booster with Mechazilla, SpaceX eliminates the need for landing legs, which reduces weight and complexity. 
Looking at the success of the fourth flight, many experts predict the fifth flight will be near perfect and might even carry some payload to orbit. Although almost a week has passed since the fourth flight, the FAA was still reviewing the launch, and they finally released their findings. What made the fourth flight approval process different was that the FAA and SpaceX reached a unique agreement before the launch took place. SpaceX proposed three specific scenarios that would not require a mishap investigation. The failure of the vehicle's thermal protection system during re-entry, the failure of the vehicle's flaps to provide control during re-entry, and the failure of the Raptor engines during the landing burn. The FAA analyzed these scenarios, assessed the risks, and confirmed that they met public safety requirements, subsequently approving them. This agreement meant that if any of these three issues occurred during the flight, SpaceX and the FAA would not have to conduct a formal mishap investigation. This was a significant shift from the standard procedure, where any failure typically triggers a detailed investigation. By pre-approving these scenarios, the FAA allowed SpaceX to focus on the overall mission success without the potential delay of investigations. During the fourth flight, SpaceX indeed encountered several major problems. For example, there was an engine failure, loss of heat shield, and damage to the flaps. While these issues indicate that repairs and upgrades will be necessary, the pre-approved scenarios mean that the FAA can overlook the engine issue, as it was part of the agreed conditions that would not trigger a mishap investigation. This streamlined process allows SpaceX to prepare for the next flight without the usual procedural delays. The issue with the flap will also be reviewed rather than investigated by the FAA. During the descent, one of the flaps failed to operate correctly, resulting in a loss of control. Despite this, Starship managed to complete a soft landing in the ocean. The FAA's working process after Flight 4 is expected to be greatly shortened. This flexibility, combined with the new pre-approved scenarios, means the next target, Flight 5, is even closer. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.